Mac Pro 20 FPS. What is this? Or MC Pro 20 FPS. This is one of the most advanced camera applications for Android and I'm recording here with it right now using this application on my Xperia Pro i. 4K 60 frames per second, 100 Mbit and you can see from the quality that this is quite good already. This application features tons of yeah, options just like HDR, HLG, LUTs that you can apply, focus speaking and a ton more. So if you want an application better than Video Pro, better than Cinema Pro on a higher level basically than all of those applications, this is the right one, Mac Pro 20 FPS. And I want to show you this in this video, all its options, all its settings and a lot more. So let's get started. So here's the Mac Pro 24 FPS user interface. And what I'll show you right now is a little bit the user interface. So we have the record button here at the top. If I hit the record button, it starts recording and you can see it's not only showing the time, it's so showing also my megabytes per second, but also the missed frames here. So you can see it's missing a lot of frames, so I have the wrong settings. Let's get out of here. What we have underneath there is a focusing option. So if I go with something and focus on something near, you can see that this little needle, this yellow needle, went down there. If I go away, you can see it's going up there. I have the option to tap to focus, so I can tap here on this, for example, and it's focusing here. I have manual focusing options where I can choose to manually focus. I have the option to have uh, not this. I have to ha the option to have focus speaking on as well. That helps me with uh, focusing around. If I have it on, I have it off right now. And I have, of course, also a zooming option, so I can zoom in digitally here if I want to. The cool thing is, if I go back to autofocus, is when I record something, I have the option to switch cameras. So you can see I can switch between the cameras. And this I can also do when recording. So I'm recording here right now. And I can switch now to the zoom camera. I can switch to the normal camera. And I can switch to the ultra wide angle again and can stop the recording. And it recorded from all those lenses, which is pretty cool. I have microphone settings here where you can choose various different tune, very different microphone settings like the level of the input. I have uh, swap channels, I have a sample rate and a bit rate that I can set to various different values. I have options here to choose how to record to with GPU acceleration, without GPU acceleration, without GPU acceleration. I have more options like also the red options that uh, indicate that uh, that might not work. And here you can set 60 frames per second, for example. And uh, yeah, have this option here working. I have target frame rate that I can set, codec that I can choose, the codec profile, the bit rate I can choose here. I have various different modes here, iframes, deblocking filters. And the good thing is I can not only turn on these settings and GPU settings if I want to, but also some helpers, like for example, distortion correction. I can turn off if I don't want it. If I want to have the best quality that the sensor is offering me, I can just simply turn it off. I have the option for noise reduction just to turn it off if I don't want it. And the same goes for hot pixel correction, sharpness I can turn off on certain devices, not this Xperia device, but other devices. They add tons of sharpening. You can just turn it off here if you don't want it. Vi vignette correction you can set up and stabilization you can also set up if you want to. Then you have some more options of the application itself. Use GPU, yes, so it allows me using GPU. I can even attach an HDMI output if I want to. Display a lot if I'm recording in HDR and want the final Rec. 709 mod here. I can do so as well, set the resolution of the viewfinder as well, and also turn off my histogram. Like you can see top right corner here, and I can turn it off and on. I can also say, okay, I only want to turn it off during recording because it just saves me a little bit of CPU power. And temperature of scenes I can turn on and off, and focus speaking I can turn on and off. And if I have focus speaking turned on, I go to manual, you can see now focus speaking is working now you can see if i go here yeah it's focusing on this if i go a little bit further you can see the blue indicator indicates what's in focus and what's not in focus so pretty cool i would say so I have a focus peaking option here as well and i can choose to 
setup things here as well. I have a grid setup, so I have a 3x3 grid here. I have also the option to show the real FPS that's recording in, uh, that's showing here. I can decrease the viewfinder, so you can see here I can do this if I want to. And I have audio level meters on or off and where they are shown as well as the level meter. And then we have uh, stop recording by tapping the screen, but I also can use as uh, also have other options like uh, AVB auto lock options, so auto exposure and auto white balance options, as well as zooming option, as well as um, infinity focus mode and volume keys. I can say, okay, they record something or they zoom in. And this is all possible here. I can choose what I want to do. And even camera key on the Xperia can be set to record the, yeah, um, to start the recording, start and stop the recording. And I have many, many other th settings here. I just scroll through. I cannot talk about all those settings because otherwise this video wouldn't be 10 minutes. This video would be 20 or 30 minutes long. Then I have all my recordings here. As you can see, I have some recordings here already done. And yeah, this is possible here. Then here are some GPU specific settings for filters. I don't want to talk about this right now, but you have the option to auto exposure log and so on. And you have many different other options here, just like profiles, set various different white balances, a manual mode. You can turn this on. I can set a Kelvin number if I want to, to whatever, to gain whatever look I really, really wish for. Uh, this is possible here with this. I can go to auto again and uh, sorry, auto. I have various different options here, as you can see. Also, seeing highlights, clippings, and so on. What might might clip here, and I have also very other profiles here that are very useful for HDR recording, HLG recording that I can set up here. And let me go back to my my normal setting here. So as you can see here, I have various different options that I can set up here. And uh, yeah, this is uh, possible also to change it directly to Rec 709 automatically, or I have other options here, MLog 100 and so on. If I'm recording in log, this is pretty, pretty awesome that I have the option to choose here which output I really want to have, HDR, HLG, or when I use this for recording, this might be very handy. Then we have exposure controls here, so I can press here to raise the exposure level or to go down. I click on this manual button, I even have the option to set my ISO and to set my shutter speed according to what I want to have. So you can see this is pretty awesome as well, I can switch to automatic so it will then take a while, but then it switches to automatic. And lock this as well, so exposure is not changed. Then I have my option to turn on my lamp. I'm not sure if you can see it, my LED lamp at the back. And some other options here, like presets that I can set for the application, but also can choose the camera that I want to use. So I can also switch to the front-facing camera if I want to uh, film myself. Here you can see me using the application. And it's not possible to record and switch to the front-facing camera, but at least the three other cameras are available here in this mode. Yeah, this is basically the user interface of Mac Pro 24 FPS. There are tons of more things that you can do. It's like a professional camera. Some menus, some things are only available with the GPU turned on, others only with the CPU turned on. So you have to check the settings here at the top and choose with or without GPU and set your resolution and aspect ratio and whatever you want to have here as well. So this is a quick overview of Mac Pro 24 FPS. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have some questions, write them down in the comment section. If you have some tips as well, that's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.